Turner is Turner. Swipes at him. Oh, my. Mobley buries Turner. Solo se va hasta adentro. Qué bárbaro. ¡Ay, saco foro! Eres un gigante. Welcome to the Wine and Gold Show, presented by Bedway. Thank you for joining us on Valley Sports Ohio. Now, here are your hosts, John Michael and Rafa Hernandez Brito. Oh, I like that new open. Yeah. Sharp, huh? Simone and Hawks. Yeah. <laughs> this is the Wine and Gold Show. It is presented by Betway. First show of the new year. Happy Woo. New Year, my friend. Happy 2022. Yeah. I, I should say like 22 instead of 2022. It would just be like 22. Yeah. So it doesn't matter. But happy new year. I hope everybody's safe at home. It was, it's been a, uh, a rocky transition into the new year on and off the court. Yeah. And, but obviously, you know, I think the, the team and the organization is, is sweeping through or trying to make it through this. Through, through all these obstacles. Yeah, like the other 29 teams, of course, yeah. in the NBA, a, a lot of teams, nearly every team, dealing with health and safety protocol. Hopefully most of that is behind us, not just for the Cavs organization, but for the rest of the NBA. Uh, and again, while difficult, every team had to do it. You know, hopefully we're on the other side. And that's in our rear view mirror moving forward. Every team had to do it, but I think, obviously, talking from our side, Everything that we worked on from the beginning of the season with the core values that mm -hmm. JB set on the table, with the unit that we had, with this group of guys that we had, I think we, we have made it through as best as we could with the fact that we have guys that can play in different positions, yeah. the fact that JB Bickerstaff has everybody working on hard on the part that they have to do for the group for the good of the team and i think you know like you said everybody has gone through this nobody has been exempt to this versatility unselfishness i mean all of them a part of being able to get through this for the Cavs. and you know what a first half of the season for this team uh we looked at the schedule when it came out and we said yikes the first yeah. 25 games uh, are not going to be easy and the Cavs got off to a terrific start and it's it's an authentic feel in that locker room and on the floor in terms of chemistry a lot of times you hear lip service about hey this team is together they like playing for each other but boy it it really has manifested itself this season out there on the floor uh, and it's meant good things for this Cavs club we uh, have a packed show Rafa yes. a packed show part of that versatility is a seven footer who can play small <laughs> forward and that's Finish. Lowry Market and he's going to be our first guest on the show for sure him is he's part of the of what we've been talking about and what I meant to say earlier was the fact that even though through all the injuries and all the 10 day contracts John we have continued to play what we can easily call now Cavaliers basketball yeah. which is sharing the ball everybody everybody takes part of the offense but Lowry not only has done it on both ends of the floor, but also playing a position that he has never played before right. and bought into what, what, what he was told. Well, a couple of seasons, the Cavs looking for an identity, and I think they've established that not only through the hustle, but on the defensive yeah. end. I mean, we haven't seen these kind of defensive numbers in <laughs> years, and that's stretching back to some of the teams that ran to the title. So that you know defensive lockdown mindset has been a huge reason why the Cavs are where they are right now. Serena Winters has joined us as our new sideline reporter on Bally Sports Ohio. She will be here in studio. The, the, the sideline for Bally Sports just got so much better looking, you know, from, from Dre to... <laughs> <laughs> No, and we, we thank Dre. He did an amazing job. Oh, he job. did. Fantastic. Right? We know and, he's a pro. Andre's a pro. He, had to, he had to make an exit with like, with Mustard coming to get him and well, stuff. You know, I mean, that's not Dre, but <laughs> we welcome Serena Winters to, to the family. Yeah, and in the second half of the show, a Cavalier legend. This is really neat, right? I mean, Jim Jones, of course, was a big part of the Miracle of Richfield team. Moved on to the L.A. Lakers. Famously won a title in, you know, in, in 1980. And now HBO is doing a, a limited mini series, is my understanding, about that time and that era. And it's called Winning Time. And there is an actor who's playing Jim on eight. <laughs> a <episodes>. model. Eight, <laughs> yes, a model <laughs> slash actor who plays a young Jim Jones for eight episodes. I, I can't wait to see this. And it's even better that our buddy is going to be <laughs> our buddy's going to be portrayed in you the mean, show. You uh, mean Jim Billy D. Williams? Jim Billy Jones? D. Williams, yes. It is not Billy D. He called himself that. Yes, he does. <laughs> <laughs> right. Which right. makes it even better. <laughs> <laughs> it's going to be fun. We're going to have Jim on to talk about winning time. Uh, like I said, packed show right here 
Uh, it is the Wine and Gold Show. It is presented by Betway. Straight ahead, Lowry Marketing. Come back and join us. It is the Wine and Gold Show. It is time for our featured guests, and it is Lowry Marketing. Great to have Lowry on board with this team this season. Lowry, how you doing? I'm doing great. How are you? Good. Here's the big question. What's colder, Finland or Cleveland? <laughs> Finland, for sure. <laughs> Does anything here remind you of home? What have you liked about Cleveland uh, being here now for a couple of months? Well, to be honest, I thought it was no more. <laughs> Every time we came here with the with the Bulls, I felt like it was snow on the ground and freezing, but it is not that bad. I guess I guess you took the snow away. That's good, Larry. Keep it keep it away. <laughs> we don't want it. For some reason it always snowing when we come back from a road trip. But <laughs> I wanted to ask you, you are the son of two professional basketball players. Your brother played football and no other one played basketball. Who is the most talented marketing in, in the family? I got to say myself, right? <laughs> <laughs> no, nothing. Obviously, uh, I think they're all great athletes in a couple of different sports. But uh, so I think we had, I think that's one of the reasons why I was here. I was always competing with them. And uh, so we pushed each other. Lowry, did you grow up playing soccer or hockey? Yeah, I played soccer on a team until I was like, It'd be 13, and I didn't, I didn't play hockey on the team. It was more of a, like outside a couple of times a week with the friends. Uh, I did try it on the team, but I got tired of putting all the gear on. So, <laughs> with the basketball, I was gonna say Zidane Charo is six nine. I mean, you can get away with. with <laughs> I, know, I know how to skate. I'll say that. <laughs> did you get to a point, Lowry, where you were just at, even at 13 or 14, where you said, "I'm just too tall for these other sports. I gotta, I gotta play basketball." Uh, not really. I, I enjoy, always enjoyed playing different sports and, uh, had those three going on at the same time. And I think just the decision was, uh, going straight from basketball practice to soccer practice and catching the ball with my hands. And I feel like that, that was kind of, okay, that, that's enough for soccer. I'm just <laughs> basketball now. So now you're part of uh, what's being called the, the jumbo lineup, you know, with yourself, with Jared Allen and with Mobley. So we have the fro. And we have Evan Mobley, who has kind of like a nice, like a small little fro. So we were thinking for, for you guys to have an identity, you should go back to this look so you can actually like have a complete, like big unit look, you know, like go from, from you to the fro. What do you think of that? Yeah, that's a, uh, uh, I asked my coach about that. He didn't like the idea of me going <laughs> back to that. So, uh, He, he he was telling me to get a haircut, but I, I showed him this picture and asked him, like, you got two options here. And he said, he said stick to this one. So. <laughs> it's an all hey, it's an all or nothing thing with Mark. Right? Like, we'll see you. We we'll see you go all the way or nothing. Right? We we'll see you wearing the Finnish jersey. How, how, how young were you when you started playing for the national team? And how, how amazing and special is that for you? Uh, I want to say I was at the camps when i was 14. i think i played my first game when i was 15. wow but it's a it's the really important part and i always try to represent the country whenever i can uh obviously just the nba season is kind of they have all the games during our seasons so obviously i haven't been able to put that jersey on in a while but uh it's always a pleasure to represent the country Take us through what that's like, Lowry. It's it's you know not the most traditional sport, obviously in Finland, but you are I mean you're the biggest thing to come out of Finland in terms of the NBA. What's that like for you to be able to go back and to have people following you and, and really enjoying what you've done throughout your five years here in the NBA? Uh, I think guys are just really happy where I am, and I think they they kind of leave me alone. Uh, it's not it hasn't been too bad, so it's. It's always fun to go back and see see other people. I think basketball is getting bigger over there. People mm -hmm. kind of realizing uh, it's, it's kind of a boom that obviously more kids come to the sport and uh, it helps when guys actually make it to the league or even college basketball and play pro and that kind of inspires the younger kids to start playing. 
You mentioned, uh, John was just saying, basketball might not be uh, the, the most popular sport, but obviously football, like we call it everywhere outside of the U.S., is, is a big sport, it's including in Finland. And how big was the fact that your brother was part of uh, Real Madrid and is actually a member of the, of the national team? I mean, are you, a, are you a football fan? Are you a soccer fan? Uh, I would say I followed more, can we talk about football mm -hmm. instead of soccer? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I followed more football when I was a... Yeah, younger, but uh, I, I I still like it. it's probably my, I mean it's hockey and football both both are there uh, that I like to follow. But I mean now right now it's more about basketball and playing it here. So I haven't followed too much, but uh, it's always too it's always fun to go to the games and uh, see them play. So so Larry, last season you're in Chicago. I mean, did you ever think in your wildest dreams? Not only do you come to Cleveland, but you come to Cleveland now as a small forward. And you're playing alongside two other seven footers. I mean, have you ever experienced anything like this? And what was your reaction when JB said, "We're going to try this thing. Let, let's see if it works. Let's see if it sticks." Yeah, I mean, when I was a kid, I used to play a little bit of small forward and uh, bring the ball up. But I, obviously, I haven't done done it at this level, and so it's a little bit of adjustment. But I'm happy to be helping the team any way I can, and uh, I'm glad it's been working so far and uh just trying to trying to get better obviously it's a little bit different stuff that you're doing at the three instead of four but uh just it's a it's a learning experience I, i've been enjoying it. well you certainly have been learning well larry let me ask you this i mean to have that protection behind you in mobley and allen to what extent does that make you more aggressive and more willing to get out there and get right on top of guys out on the perimeter Oh, for sure. That that's one thing we talk about, kind of knowing that we have those two guys protecting us, and I think it gives everybody confidence on the that you can be a little bit more aggressive and on the ball. Because even if they happen to beat you, they're still protection. Then we we play as a unit. We, then they they protect us, and we got to protect them to close back out after they help us. So uh, it's been it's been fun and. Uh, we're still trying to get better at it, and uh, but going day by day. Before we let you go, Larry, this is your chance. What's your favorite spot here in Cleveland? Uh, give a shout out to your go-to spot right now. I don't know if it's a restaurant or a deli, a coffee shop, but what, what's your favorite spot right now in Cleveland? So I haven't really been anywhere yet. Uh, <laughs> I say Rocket Mortgage Field. <laughs> 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 Yeah, Chef T, right Chef at the practice. T, there you go. That's a good <laughs> shout out. Yeah, yeah I, I've been living a simple ba basketball go home type of life. So uh, that's good. That's what I was gonna say. That's what you want to hear out of a new acquisition. I'll, right? I'll, I'll take I'll take some recommendations for pizza spots. So that that's one thing I haven't found yet. So oh, uh, good luck. I've been I'm, me being a New Yorker, I've been having a hard time finding pizza. Obviously, you from you came from Chicago, but I got a couple of spots for you. Yeah, we'll take okay. care of you. Cool. We'll, hey, we'll open right. up the Twitter lines and yeah. uh, <laughs> to request here yeah, on best, the best pizza spot in Cleveland. There we go. We'll figure it out for you, Lowry. We'll report back. Hey, hey thanks, man, for joining yeah, us. Continue. You. Good luck. Thanks, man. Thank you. All right, our thanks to Lowry Marketing as the Wine and Gold Show rolls on. Always good to catch up with him, isn't it? Yeah, pizza is a hard spot here in Cleveland. We'll figure no, it out. Not many There's places plenty of sell spot. by the slice. You're yeah, but not many snotty. places sell by the slice, and I. I, I I don't want to hear it. I don't, I don't want to say we'll I'm single, but I live by myself most of the time. Yeah, well, <laughs> there are reasons why. There are reasons why. More after this. We welcome you back to the Wine and Gold Show, John Ooh. and Rafa. And look who has instantly... <laughs> lit up the set. Hey, hey. <laughs> Here she is. It didn't take long. Straight out of uh, Philly well, by way of Huntington of Beach. By way of a lot of places. Yes. <laughs> I've been everywhere. We're going to get to know Serena Winters here. Welcome. I'm sure this is how you had it drawn up at the start of the season. Yes. By the All-Star break, I will end up in Cleveland. Definitely. Working for Bally Sports yeah, Ohio, right? I did. And I really thought that, you know, <laughs> in what are we in? We're in the first week of January here. I just pictured myself walking <laughs> into the field house 
with a three-point stance outside as the wind <laughs> is just yes. murdering my side, guys. I mean, I can't even tell you about this welcome to Cleveland moment I just had. For the Southern California native. For the Southern California the, the native. The amazing thing about this is that Cleveland will keep on welcoming you as the winter <laughs> goes along. Yeah, you, it's not a one-time thing. No. <laughs> you, the, the, the great thing about this city is that the Cleveland welcome moments are never ending. They just never end. Yeah. Never wow. End. Wow. So you have had a number of stops throughout your NBA career. Yeah. Right? The most recent one was in Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. Prior to that, out on the West Coast. Mm -hmm. Can you take us through quickly the journey that it took you here to Cleveland to eventually work with AC and me, which I'm sure is a delight. It Down is. Retreat. It's going to be a delight. <laughs> oh, yes. <laughs> I mean, how much time day. do you have? Because <laughs> yeah, it's a long journey. Yes. But if I'm going to shorten it a little bit. Condensed um, version. Condensed version. Yes. I interned for the Lakers while I was in college at UC Santa Barbara. Mm -hmm. Sports broadcasting was what I've known I wanted to do since before I entered college, specifically basketball. Basketball has always been my first love. I My first dream ever was to be the first woman in the NBA, Ooh. like bypassing the WNBA, just <laughs> yeah. going straight, straight yeah, to yeah. the NBA, right? Yeah. And then as you get a little bit older and you realize what types of dreams could potentially be realistic <laughs> and what what would not be realistic. And, you know, if I was going to play ball in college, it was going to be like at a D2, mm -hmm. maybe D3 school. And then I went to UC Santa Barbara and there's a sports radio station there. I was in sports radio interning for the Lakers, got out of college and did a bunch of free work and internships and then wound up um, covering the Lakers for seven years. I was a host and analyst for the Lakers TV network. Yep. And then I got a call and someone said, hey, do you want to move to Portland, Oregon and host your own sports TV show? Oh, yes. So I said, heck, yes, I do. So moved to Portland, Oregon, had a good time there, was only there for nine months, but I missed something. I missed being in a basketball arena yeah. every day, all day, <laughs> honestly. Like, I just missed hearing that basketball bounce. And so nine months in, I got a call from Philadelphia, and they said, hey, do you want to come out here and interview for the sideline position with the Sixers? Mm -hmm. Did that, and as soon as I stepped foot back in a basketball arena, I said, as good as this Monday through Friday hosting sports TV show gig is, Let's get back in the grind yeah. where you're up till 3 a.m. Yeah. covering basketball too. And right? you were phenomenal, by the way. That's where we got to know you yeah. in the NBA circuit. Uh, phenomenal job in Philadelphia. Yeah. Go on. Yeah. So. And then, look, the pandemic hit. Right. And everything changed. And all of a sudden, and I get the call from Cleveland, and here <laughs> I am. Crazy thing is, I was here a couple of weeks ago, unrelated to this job right completely unrelated <laughs> I got a call from NBC Sports Bay Area saying hey would you mind if we flew you out to Cleveland and could you call a game for us for this rehearsal could you do play by playing color and I said of course wait you want to fly me out to Cleveland <laughs> and they said yeah and I said are you kidding me because I had already been talking with you know you guys right. over here and so I was here a couple of weeks ago and I go you know what how, how does this happen? That's fate. Like, you can't make this stuff that up. That is fate. I'm supposed to yeah. be here. And by the way, the game that you had to do play-by-play -play and color all by yourself, yes. the Cavs happened to score 81 points in oh the my first gosh. half against It was the so Kings. exciting. <laughs> the next day, I had completely lost my voice because, right. as you know, and I was, you know, I had great seats. I was on the other side of you but courtside, and Mobley's just throwing down dunk after dunk. Yep. And I'm standing up in the seat, <laughs> and I am screaming because I'm so excited to call the game. You know what I mean? And this team just was so much fun that night. And I, I left Cleveland just feeling like, all right, I'm going to be back. I'll see you again yeah, soon. Yeah. So, so from two people who were not quite sure that this was their destiny, how did you know <laughs> from an early age that, uh, that this is where you eventually wanted to be in I, the NBA and doing this yeah, stuff? I mean, look, basketball for me has always been kind of my – almost my North Star, mm -hmm. right? Like, I can't tell you how much it meant to me growing up, um, playing at the Boys and Girls Clubs, the Y, being on the all-boys basketball team <laughs> and me getting to be the one female on it and yeah. having to prove myself. Nice. Um, you know, that really shaped who I was, and I really think it shapes who I am today mm -hmm. still, right? Like, those experiences growing up. And then you get to a state in your life and your career where you go okay what what realistically is going to work out for me and there was a time where I, I although all I ever wanted to do was play professional basketball 
I was playing against the females that were going to play professional basketball. And in, in high school, I did a program called Model United Nations. It's um, basically a debate team. You take on the position of a country, you take on a world issue, and you have to debate that world issue based off of whatever the position of that country that you were given is. Right. And so I did that for four years in high school and realized, hey, I kind of like and I'm kind of good at this whole public speaking thing. So although I played basketball, I ran track, I played golf, and I did that all four years. My freshman year, I even threw volleyball in there. I don't know how I did four sports in three seasons, but I did. Um, I just married the two of my love of sports and being pretty good at broadcasting and public speaking. And when I got to college, I went to the radio station there and figured out how I could be involved in sports radio. Smart. And the, the moment that I knew that this was for me was I was getting to call a women's basketball game at UC Santa Barbara. Mm. I was going to be the color analyst, and it was my first live broadcast covering a game. We get there. I'm super excited. At the time, I didn't have glasses yet. I hadn't had my eyes checked because my mom was always like, you're fine. Like she wasn't big on doctors growing up. You're fine, you can see. Well, you get to college and there's like, you're sitting in the rafters and I realized I couldn't see very well. So I'm sitting at the top and I'm like squinting to try to read you know, the, the numbers in the back. Then we try to go live and all of our radio equipment goes out, all of it. <laughs> this is my first broadcast. So we have to call into the radio station on one of those Motorola flip phones. Mm -hmm. And the play-by-play, -play, his name was Chris Hoffman, um, and myself passed this flip phone <laughs> back and forth for this women's basketball broadcast at UC Santa Barbara. I kid you not, I got the biggest high I have ever felt in my entire life from that game. And it was that moment that I knew that I was gonna chase that for the rest of my life. And for better or worse, here we are. <laughs> and that's what's so, great about life sports, because it, it could still happen to you <laughs> next yep. game. Trust yeah. me, that you're gonna have to figure something out oh, yeah. to get I, on I've the I've always said if you can do those sports, for those who've worked up through the high school and college mm -hmm. ranks, if you can do those, if you can do high school football, for example, yeah. where there's 100 kids, there's no shoulder numbers, you can't see, you're up in the rafters, yep. you can do anything, yep. right? And it's those, I mean, good for you. I mean, that's fantastic, those experiences. I also always say in broadcasting, a really difficult day is figuring out that you can talk about sports better than you could play sports. <laughs> yeah. That's a, well, that's welcome a rough to, day welcome for to all the club. Us, right? We all wanted it to be in the league. Ego. We hey, I was pretty good. I was pretty good. Hey there, Tom. And I can still throw some bows. So uh, right. if you want to get me hey, on the basketball no, 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 no. Before we go, go. I don't want any of that. Nothing. How many How many of your co-worker colleagues have called you Serena Williams in, by mistake on the air? Or, Every or single one everyone, of them. Everyone, right? Yeah. Every <laughs> single one of them. And you know what's funny is being here and introducing yourself to so many people, I just started to say, when they, when they don't know how to remember my name, I just say, look, it's just like Serena Williams, a tennis player, because look, I look just like her, so now <laughs> yeah. they'll never forget. <laughs> and they usually laugh, and then they remember my name. Yeah. <laughs> Serena, it is so great to have you with us. Uh, our group, Instantly Better, uh, to have you around. Welcome to lovely Cleveland. I hope it continues to greet you with, with, with many my, memories. With my defensive three-point stance. And you're going to love <laughs> Senor Cavalier. He's the best human you'll ever, you'll ever be next to. I yeah. think that you can be sure of that. Well, you guys have already welcomed me with open arms. It's been <laughs> so much fun already. I, I, I'm excited for the rest of the season and the future. Sounds good. Serena Winters, everybody. This is the Wine and Gold Show. More right after this. We are back here on the Wine and Gold Show. Of course, community service is one of the backbones of this Cavs organization. And as part of the season of giving presented by Oswald, in December, members of the Cavs team brought some holiday joy to patients at Cleveland Clinic Children's main campus and Shaker Heights Rehabilitation Facility with their annual hospital event, which they did virtually this season. Now, each patient received a gift from the Cavs and had time to chat with a couple of the players with the help of Zoom, I love this event, Rafa. Always a good one every year. It is always great. Yeah. I know you said the Cavaliers are year-round involved with the community, but the guys were really into the fact that it was the end of the the end of the holiday mm -hmm. season. These kids are in the hospital, and they get a chance to not only spend some time with them virtually, but also get them a present to to, right. to just make everything better. Uplifting. Yeah. Uh, thanks to the Cavs players for participating. Cavs in the community is brought to you by Discount Drug Mart. We'll be back with Cavalier legend Jim Jones before the Wine and Gold Show.
right after this. Back here on the Wine and Gold Show. I am really excited for this next segment. I have to tell you, Rafa, the, it was announced a couple of months ago that a new mini-series, limited edition series, is coming out on HBO titled Winning Time. It's about the Showtime Lakers and one of our good friends and Cavalier legend happen to be part of that team and a big part of that team. And we're going to bring him on, Jim Jones, to... Uh, to discuss, I can't wait. He was a big part, a huge part of, of that it. team, especially when Kareem went down and that year they won the championship. I know I I always talk to Jim about how everybody says you know the rookie played the, the center position, but it was really oh. Jim Jones, yeah, banging inside, but obviously not not taking anything away from 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 Magic Johnson, obviously. But he was a huge part of the. And I got a question I gotta ask Jim when he comes in because I'm I'm, I'm a little worried about. Uh, I wanted to be part of this movie. All right, well, okay, we can ask him about that. As uh, Let's bring in Jim Jones, a Cavalier legend about to be immortalized now <laughs> in Hollywood. Jim, you're played by an actor in this series. Any truth to the rumor that Billy D. Williams was the first choice for the production <laughs> company? Well, Billy was busy. <laughs> so he called me to apologize. <laughs> uh, and I said, okay, this time I'll let you off the hook, Billy. <laughs> Jim, this is really exciting stuff. When did you find out that this was going to happen? And what was your first reaction about, you know, just the fact that there's going to be a young actor playing a young Jim Jones in this series? Well, it happened uh, about six to eight months ago, maybe longer. Last year, probably about this time. I don't have uh, Instagram or Facebook. I have too many enemies. But anyway, <laughs> uh, uh, so my daughter called me. She said, Dad, some guy wants to talk to you. I said, about what? He's on Instagram, and he he says, I want to get in touch with Jim Jones. I'm working on something with HBO, and I want to get his input. So uh, reluctantly, I dialed it, and uh, Newt Newton Mayinge, uh, Nigerian kid, uh, born in this country though, but uh, from Nigerian descent. Uh, he called me. We spoke for two and a half hours. You know how I like to talk, John. So. <laughs> it didn't take much because I got I had stars in my eyes, and I was saying, "Damn, this is my Denzel chance." <laughs> <You know? laughs> and so we talked for two and a half hours, and we just talked in general. Then he started calling me back. He said they got him typed in for two episodes, and I said. Uh, you know, no part is too small, right? So uh, we just kept talking. Every once in a while, he'd ask me a question. Well, what did you do with this situation? What did you do this? How was the feeling this and that? Because he's trying to get something for the character, right? Sure. So uh, these conversations over the course of the next four to six months uh, ended up where they put him in eight episodes. <laughs> <laughs> now, you know, I know you're happy that you're being played by a by a model. Obviously, you know you you had no, the by a, no by a younger man. You had <laughs> you have the physique of, of a young model when you were in, in the nineteen late late seventies, right? You're playing with the Lakers, winning the title. I'm a little concerned. I need to get in touch with Mr. McKay because Butch Lee was the first Puerto Rican to play in the NBA and won a title with you guys over there. And I should be playing Butch Lee on that movie, Charles. <laughs> <laughs> It's funny you should say that because I talk to Butch probably three times a month uh, for the last, well, since protocol, since last year. You know, he and I stay in touch. Of course, he lives in Puerto Rico, great businessman. Mm -hmm. He has a son. One of his sons is at St. Francis. I think it's St. Francis or, or St. Peter's. And uh, he's going to be in the league. He's an outstanding uh, point guard. <laughs> Jim, here's my question. You know, this obviously there's going to be some in this miniseries scenes on the court, but most of it is about what took place behind the scenes and what yes. you guys were up to during that time. At any point, did you say, hey, listen, you know, I was in my 20s in L.A. Like exactly what scenes are you guys going to be showing here? <laughs> I'm a little concerned about what <laughs> I'm not so sure I want to open up my whole <laughs> life to what was going on at that time off the court. Well, let me put it like this. It's the most money I ever made. Uh, um, I stayed at a townhouse on the poor side. You know, when you go down San Francisco Boulevard, like you're going toward the beach, on the right side are the $1 to $40 million homes. On the left side 
are the ones that nobody wants to buy the property and they let the property go down and those who were probably maybe 90 to 60,000. Well, that's where my townhouse was. <laughs> that's where we, that's where we, we had up and downstairs townhouse and we lived there. And so um, all I can tell you is this, is that LA is the best place to play. Let me tell you why, because of the notoriety, you never have to pay for anything. I was getting stuff to go to the Emmys, the Academy Awards, all of this stuff. The only thing that stopped me, I didn't have the right suits, <laughs> you know, so I couldn't go to a lot of this stuff. But as far as the way things are now, John and Robert, and so social media, LA is LA and New York City <laughs> are definitely the places to be. But uh, but but you have to have a conscience, and you also have to understand that some things you just don't talk about. You know, you know they want to. We know that HBO is famous for exposing people. So, so I don't know. I don't even know how they're going to present me. I really don't. But I do know that I, I like new. You know, it's not reality, even though a lot of people think watching television and these shows are. But uh, I'm comfortable with it. You know, I'm looking forward to it. Eight, eight, eight episodes, guys. That's yeah, nice. that's great. And, I, yeah, and of course, I'm just teasing. I mean, and I think to myself, if I was in my young 20s in yeah. LA, I'm not sure. You know, but all that, all that being said, Jim, you know, you played at Marquette. To, for one of the best college basketball minds in yeah. in 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 the, with Mr. McGuire, you know, in the history yeah. of college basketball. Then you come to the you come to the NBA through the ABA. You were part of the, the one of the greatest moments of this franchise. Obviously, you you the fracture on your leg is what kind of stopped the Cavs from winning that first championship and the miracle of Richfield and all that. But were you aware at the time that you were playing next to this? Hall of Famers as Magic, future Hall of Famer, and Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, you being an a, a undersized guy in an era where the centers were just humongous. And, but you were, were you aware that you were around greatness at that early in your career? Well, let me, let me clarify one thing, Rafa. You are right. Uh, I was slight of built. I didn't have any muscles because my kids see the old films and they're laughing. I said, why are you looking at this? <laughs> Dad, look at your legs and your shoulders. Dad, you don't have any muscles. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Jim, before we let you go, you know, if you had one one memory from that time or one thing, let me, let me ask it a different way. When you watch this series, okay, that's coming up, if you want them to convey just one thing or one feeling or something that was special to you about that time, what do you want to see in this mini series to, to, to accurately maybe convey some emotions or, or some way that you felt during this time? That honestly is a great question, but it's a simple question. Uh, magic. It was all about magic, man. He was so open. He was so enthusiastic about playing. Uh, he didn't have a bad friend. We, we, we would all die for him because we saw what he did, how hard he worked, and he understood how to play his game. And his game is the game they're playing now. Fast pace, open shots, uh, undersized players, you know, because I'm 6'10", but I could run. I never will forget one time we were playing, every time we took Kareem out, we started running. You know, I'm getting dunks. You know, Jamal Wolf's shooting jumpers from the corner early in the clock. And uh, we go to timeout and Kareem looks, he says, why don't you na, 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 run like that when I'm on the floor? <laughs> no, no, why don't you da, na, 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 play like that when I'm on the floor? And uh, Magic looks up and says, get your big ass down the floor. <laughs> 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 and we started laughing. You know, we started laughing because we're all friends. And it was funny because that was the beginning of Showtime. After maids or misses, we ran, baby. I mean, we picked the pace up. Jim, it's always fun catching up. I can't wait for this. I can't. I can't let you go without asking you a question. Who What's plays that? center for the LA Lakers after Kareem Abdul-Jabbar got hurt? Magic Johnson. You know. Yeah, that. right. <laughs> <laughs> I love you, Jim. <laughs> okay, love you guys. Jim, thanks so much for the Wine and Gold Show. Right after this. John and Rafa welcoming you back. Hey, you want to talk All-Star? It's going to be here, 75th anniversary. If it's, if it's a big anniversary, it's for yeah, Cleveland. Cleveland the is the place. <laughs> That's right. 2022, 
NBA All-Star right here in Cleveland. It's right around the corner. Yes. I mean, month. it is almost upon us. Fantastic news, of course, that Cleveland is awarded the All-Star game in 2022. And what might make it a little more special, Rafa, is that three Cavaliers are really playing All-Star level basketball and and campaigning to be a part of the festivities. And, you know, and usually every every other team goes out and campaigns for their guys to to become to become all stars. But when you talk about what the Cavaliers have done this year, starting with Darius Garland, we always mention the word growth next to Darius Garland. And I think it's not that this year he has started to do it. He's been doing it all along since he's been in the NBA. Jared Allen became a much better center playing with Darius Garland, who has figured out a way to, to play with the big guy, you know, with the alley-oop or with the floater. And then on the other side, you know, you have a rookie who doesn't look like a rookie, John, and, and, <laughs> and Evan Mobley deserves to be, to be among those in the, in the All-Star game. Well, you saw some highlights there of Darius Garland, and you mentioned Most Improved. Let's not forget that Darius Garland received Most Improved Award votes Last year, last year yeah. all right, and the jump from the first to the second season. This jump has been even more significant from second season to third season. He's in the mix. I mean, and we're talking about a, a difficult, talent-loaded position, position to get yourself to the All-Star game. And Darius Garland is not just in the mix. I mean, he the numbers are at an All-Star level right now. And to see the stark difference in the way that this team looks without Garland on the floor and with him on the floor, it, it makes you realize it, it – it, it makes you realize just how much more important it is to have him there that goes beyond the numbers, right? It's not just numbers with Darius Garland. He gets this team into an offense in ways – I mean, the kid's 21 years of age, right? Let's not forget that. He, he's a young man, just 21 years of age, and he's doing so many things on the floor that, that spreads throughout this Cavalier lineup. And you know what I like even more, John, is that he has been able to do this with the game or the scheme of the Cavaliers changing completely – from the middle of last season to obviously now he's playing full-time with Jared Allen, but he has adjusted his game, has figured it out, and he's definitely the floor general for the Cavaliers. The combination, the chemistry, we see some highlights here between Garland and Allen, has been there from day one. And Jared Allen, you know, again, you want to talk about numbers. I mean, this guy's averaging a healthy double-double. Mm -hmm. Tell me another center that's better in the East outside maybe of Joel Embiid when he's on the floor. You can't find one. And talk about talk about most improved. You can't. I mean, you Jared can't Allen is averaging better numbers almost across the board. We talked about this before. He signs an extension during the offseason. A lot of times when people sign an extension, they exhale. They say, whew, I made it. I got my money. <laughs> Jared Allen did the opposite, right? Jared Allen got in here and he said, the responsibility this season is going to be even greater. I need to earn this. And man, oh man, has he done exactly that. And, and, and in a way that you enjoy watching it, in a oh. way that you, you want to be with this guy. The, the Garland Allen pick and roll, yeah. I mean, has been unstoppable at, at times this season. It's it, been a pleasure to it's watch. It's a picture poison for the defender. Of course. Because they have to either guard the alley oop, and then Garland punishes them with the floater who has, he has mastered this year, or they have to go and guard the floater. And, you know, leave, leave the big guy open on the, on the other end. At the start of the month, Darius Garland was number two in the entire NBA in floaters made this season. Great stuff. But Evan Mobley, I mean, forget about Rookie of the Year <laughs> award, right? I mean, the guy's the leader in the clubhouse <laughs> for that without any question. I mean, it, let's start there. I mean, Scotty Barnes is the only guy who's even close yeah. right now up in Toronto. And I think there's a clear edge for Evan Mobley. But, hey, Rookie of the Year award aside – this guy might – I mean, we're talking all-star type He's going to have a busy weekend guy. because yeah. he's going to play in the future – on the Rising Stars. The Rising Stars for sure. And then I think he should be – I asked JB the other day, in a way jokingly, but how much he has improved, averaging over almost 20 points after coming back from being in the protocol. And are we gonna just going to have to be in awe with this guy every day? And JB said, well, you know, we had a conversation with him, and he was told he was going to have to take a little bigger role. But it, it's easier said than done especially in the NBA, and especially as a rookie. And this guy, has, I mean, immediately you, you, you can see he got the message and <laughs> has run the, with the ball. Everything you ask him to do, he does. Yes. And he's unflappable, right? I mean, teams are throwing bodies at him, trying to rough him up. It doesn't matter. And he's just as good on the defensive end as he is on the offensive end. Each and every game you see something out of Evan Mobley that makes you say, wow, 
Yeah. That's yet another thing that he has but in the, his bag, in his arsenal. The most important thing, and I have said this many times, these guys have done anything in their power to be in the All-Star game. Now it's the fans' turn right. to do what they can. And all you have to do is go to Cavs.com slash vote, and you can vote up to 10 times every day, or you can do it via social media. I know you're a big social media guy. On Twitter, you can you just use the hashtag of their name, Jared Allen, and hashtag All-Star Game, and there we are, NBA All-Star. Hashtag NBA All-Star, hashtag, or, or the at handle, whatever, for, J for Big J with Jared yeah. Allen. And then that's it. We need you guys to vote or just retweet. The, the tweet that uh, John or the Cavs or anybody puts in, and every retweet, is a vote, and we need to be represented in our own home yeah, on we, the 75th anniversary of the NBA. Come on. We, we will be. And, and I, we have to. I can't wait. I can't wait to see how this shakes out. We're going to take a final break and be back to wrap things up right after this. Vote Garland. Vote Allen. Yes. Vote Mobley. Back here to close up shop on the Wine and Gold Show. Coming to you from the depths of Rocket Mortgage Fieldhouse. Boy, it has been fun in this building this season. Every game. I mean, the crowd has been rocking. The energy has been special. And why not? The team's been playing some great basketball. It's just it's fun to have this atmosphere. Again, you know, as we've been dealing with so many things over the last couple of seasons, to, to, to feel that energy and atmosphere and see the smiles on the faces once again. It, it has been amazing, and I just, I, I hate to be repetitive, but I need the fans to vote for Darius, for Jared Allen, and for Eva Mobley. And if I can leave them with a message as well, let's continue to take care of themselves. Wear a mask when you can, when you're gonna be in public around the crowd, and we want you healthy, we want you at the field house, and why not? We want you celebrating the All-Star game in Cleveland. Yeah, can't wait for the All-Star game. Love to see you here in this building. Our thanks to our guests, Lowry Marketing, Serena Winters, Billy D. Jones for joining us. This has been the Wine and Gold Show, presented by Betway. <laughs>